Yeah, so um, yeah, I just wanted to see something, man. I wanted, I wanted to hurt these guys, and I think they were still on the property during that time. Man, I started making phone calls. I started calling some of my buddies, and really, what I wanted, I was kind of like, and some of them, you know, I was just trying to call some of my family members. I even called my daughter, tried to call my daughter, but I think she was in school. I even called her mother. I kind of wanted somebody to talk me out of it because what I was about to do, you know, wasn't going to be pretty. I was going to go over there. I was going to call them out. I was going to beat the crap out of them. You know, I was just going to physically you know, do some bodily harm, beat the shit out of them. You know, like I know how. And if they came up with something else, a knife or something else, I would have had the perfect excuse to shoot them. You know, or blast them off. Or something. You know. But, um, I just kind of wanted, I guess, somebody to talk me out of it. You know. Because, like I said, man, I, I was just, I was really hot. I was, I was really pissed off, you know, when that happened. I even called her mother. I talked to her for a while, and we got even involved into something else, you know. Got into another argument or something else, you know, from back then, which was no bueno, not good. And one of my friends even told me, dude, just calm down, dude, because right now, that's accelerado. The mechanic, uh, Robert, shout out to Robert, uh, Roberto, he told me, nah, dude, just because you're, you're right now. You're hot. You're hot-headed right now, dude. You need to think straight what you're going to do. Because, you know, you know, you're going to get yourself in trouble. And he told me, and, and he was right, you know. Because, and not only that, man, I had even got myself dressed up, man. I put a freaking suit on. I put a suit on with a tie and everything, eh? <coughs> Excuse me. I put a, I put a freaking a suit and tie, man. I was trying to put some nice shoes on because I knew I was going to go to jail. So I was going to possibly go to jail. So, you know, the, prob the probability um, was pretty high. So, um, I was ready to go. I was ready to go to jail. Go to the police station afterwards. After what I was going to do. You know? So, I was getting myself ready with a, with a, a suit and tie. Up until Grandma woke up. And she saw me walking back and forward, back and forward. Why are you dressed like that? I told her what happened. Nah, why are you going to do that? And I'm like, no, I'm going to hurt these fools right now. I'm going to beat the hell, I'm going to beat the shit out of them right now. I'm going to hurt them. I'm going to hurt them right now. I'm going to hurt them real bad. I'm going to hurt these fools. I'm going to hurt both of them. I'm going to hurt them. I'm gonna hurt. And I was adamant. I was adamant it was going to happen. I was going to do it. Because they were still there. Up until Grandma, she saw me. Almost walking out the door. I was kind of walking towards the door, you know, to go do it. Because I was hot. I, I wasn't even thinking straight, man. I wasn't thinking straight, you know, at all. Up until she she grabbed me, literally grabbed me. Think about your kids, man. What's the matter with you? And she started talking. She started praying to God because she's really religious, you know. Started mentioning Jesus Christ and, and then in the name of Jesus Christ, you know. Well, that in Jesus, she started saying it. Yeah, she grabbed me and um, told me to think about my daughter, think about my sons, and what's going to be of them. And long story short, with her, I, I got, I got into my senses. She said, "God's going to take care of it, man. Don't worry about it." And something they came over me, and I just decided to let God take care of it, and. At the end of the day, God's going to take care of these guys. You know, I didn't do nothing wrong. You know, I didn't start the whole thing. But um, they're going to end up paying for it. They're going to end up paying for it good. You know, especially that woman. Um, well, anyways, uh, like a couple of days later, after this, this whole thing had happened, I had a homeboy, a shout out to white boy. A homeboy white boy showed up. I think it was like a Sunday. He showed up to the house, man. He showed up, man, and with his freaking lowrider and everything. 
and they know him too. Uh, he showed up, man, with his car. Hey, what's up, man? You know, everything all right? Because he got wind of it. I had called him and stuff like that. And we had talked the day before, and he was like, damn, dude, if I was you, man, I would have shot. I would have just told you to kill him, man. Nah, take him out. Shoot these fools, man. You know, Take him out, you know. I would have just told you to take him out. That's what I would have told you. I would have taken him out if I was you. Hell nah, man. These fools don't deserve to be here. They don't deserve to be in this freaking earth. They're going to be acting like this. You know, <laughs> this is some crazy stuff, you know. And so he showed up to see if everything was all right. Everything all right, dude, man. Everything all right, street man. That's a friend right there, dude. You know, I really appreciate it, you know. Like, yeah, man, appreciate it, man. Appreciate your support. So he took off, and um, a few days later, um, I saw um, my buddy, um, shout out to Pablo, Pablo and, and Carlitos, shout out to Carlos, Carlitos, Carlos, shout out to him too, they showed up to my house in their bikes, talking about, they had just heard of what had happened to me, and they thought it had happened that moment, at that moment, they said, oh yeah, they said, who told you? And they told me that Robert, the mechanic, told him, yeah, Roberto Borracho. And it's because they said as soon as he told them, while they were right there kicking it, they just got their bikes and didn't even think. They just got their bikes and came straight to my house, both of them. They were ready to fight, man. They had, they were ready to fight. Yeah, who did it, man? Who, who got you? What, what happened, man? You know? And I started explaining to them what had happened. And that whose car happened to be right there, you know, Andre's. Now, it would have been somebody else, man. I could have easily lured him out. We could have, we could have taken it out on his car. I could have, we could have, me and, me and these guys could have broken this freaking windows. We could have been shouting out from the house. And I could tell, man, that, that they were scared stiff because they saw us outside. And, um, they started closing the freaking windows and everything. And, um, I was somebody else. I would have been shouting to come out. I would have lured them outside. And knowing me, um, or knowing these guys, they would have probably just jumped them, both of them, you know. And I would have probably been the guy to tell them to stop already, you know, to leave these fools alone already. And um, I would have probably gotten the sucker, my sucker punch back, you know. I would have probably just kicked him while he's down. <laughs> it was something stupid, you know, just to get my lick back. But um, we could have probably, more than likely, we would have destroyed that fool's car. Broke all his freaking windshields. Punch his freaking tires. Because that fool had a knife too, man. Freaking Pablo, you know, always carrying a knife. And the other guy too, always carrying something. We would have punched that fool's tires, man. We could have done a mess to that fool's car. Could have destroyed it right then and there. And what would that bro No, what the heck would that would have brought? More trouble, you know, obviously. And he just kept telling me, yeah, dude, whenever you need us, man, let, let me know, man. You know, I'm your buddy, man. You know, I'm, I'm your friend. That's Timon Chingo, you know, which means that kind of telling you like he loves me like a, a true friend. I'm a true friend. And like anytime, anytime you need something, just let just let us know, man. You know, you tell me whenever you want. You know, just let me know, man. I'll be right here. You know, we'll come by. And I, and I was like, yeah, dude, I really appreciate that, man. I, I hug both of them and I was really appreciative for the support, you know, for what they were telling me and. You know, coming by and they showing up like that. But yeah, man, that's what happened. And yeah, we could have easily, you know, we could have easily done a lot of things, man. I could have easily done a lot of things to these guys, man. Had I been the person that I was from before, you know, I could have taken it out in his car for sure, just to lure him out. And before anybody showed up, I could have done all this mess with myself, you know, by myself. They don't know how close they came to going to the freaking morgue just by walking into the house when, when they did that. They don't know how close they came. They have no idea. That's why I kept telling them, you guys don't know what you guys are getting yourself involved into. But, um, yeah, I had to calm my, I had to calm these fools down too, man, because they were ready to fight. They were, re they were, they were hot. Nah, man, we're, we're pissed off, man. We just got, we just heard about it right now. You know, I thought, we thought that it happened right now. 
and that's how it, that fool made it sound. So we just came right here, straight up, straight, straight to your house. Now, like, yeah, I appreciate that, man. That's a, that's a true homeboys right there, a real homeboys right there. So I really appreciated that, man, big time. And um, so yeah, I could have done the same thing too, you know, maybe in that matter. Had they, you know, they needed me in some ways like that. But obviously, you know, I don't, I don't, I don't get myself involved into none of that stuff anymore like that, into trouble. But, um, I was just trying to avoid the issue. But all they did was just, uh, they opened a can of worms at that moment. But I didn't let anything, you know, after grandma and other people were telling me to calm down and let a couple of days pass by and see what you're going to do. You know, so yeah, because other than that, I'll let my freaking emotions pass, and I could have just done something, you know, something I, I would have regretted for sure. You know, I could have done something real stupid, and I could have really hurt the guy. You know, and then all the circle would have just kept going. These guys would have came back, trying to do some more stuff, and then I would have to shoot somebody else, and then they would try to shoot us. And then I was going to have to have trouble. I was going to become into that kind of fight. And it was never going to end. It was. It would have been a never-ending uh, story. So, yeah. These guys don't use, you know, they don't use their freaking brain. Well, they ain't even got none. Because, man. But, yeah, that's what happened, guys. Man. I could have easily done something stupid. I would have. I would have fell down just like them. I would have been in their level. I would have been in their category, you know. But I didn't let that. I didn't let that happen. So, I was, you know, my kids are fine. You know, I know I started going into binging and stuff like that. I, was, well, I wasn't really binging. I was just kind of like frustrated myself. That's why I was drinking and having issues, you know, because I can't really, I can't work. You know, they're not. I'm not allowed to work. I can't help my financial issues, you know. And I've been frustrated because of that, because I can't give my my kids a better life and stuff like that because of because of my episodes, you know, the seizures that I get. And that's been kind of what had me frustrated, you know, having me frustrated too, because I was having them. I was having a lot of episodes. I even got one in the railroad tracks too, man, a couple of times. Um, so yeah, you know, th they saw me the other day too, and they didn't know what to do, but, um, they just, they were there taking care of me, you know, they were th like Sugar, shout out to Sugar. She stood there all night with me. The other time I, I, I just fell asleep over there because I had one of those episodes and she stood right there next to me and Ramble too. Shout out to Ramble. They stood right there, man, just, uh, looking out for me. Making sure I didn't stay there by myself. You know, that nothing was going to happen to me. And so, I love those guys, man. Y los quiero mucho, you know? Los estimo mucho. Gracias. And, um, and if I wanted something to happen to her daughter, too, I could have easily just called Sugar. And she has a lot of female friends. Like Gigi, Gigi would have came by, too. Gigi and the other girl. La Cuba, called Cuba, you know, and Sugar, and even her girlfriend. Yeah, she has a girlfriend. <laughs> they would have came by, man, and if I wanted to, I could just call them to just come over here and whoop her ass, you know, just to beat the hell out of her to get something back because she was the one that started. If you want trouble, you got it. I would just call them up just to come over here to beat her ass, you know, because they would. You know, they would. They will. And so, but yeah, you know, I didn't want to allow nothing, stuff like that to happen, man. But the moral of the story is that, you know, I ain't nobody's punk, man, and stuff like that. But what had happened that day was just uncalled for. It's about using your freaking logic. Don't use your freaking emotions. You know, think what you think logically, not emotionally, because that's when we do stupid things. You know, and and that's how you get yourself in trouble. You know what had happened? I don't know if I mentioned it. Um, 
I had gotten to I had gone into it with some fool in the in the metro. I was about to get shot, you know, in front of the kids. This fool was messing around with some Mexican guy, right? Some you know, some Hispanic guy. The guy was minding his own business and this guy was hollering, this African American was hollering and hollering and and raving and saying stupid Mexican, this and that. To a point where he put hands on him. As soon as he did that, the other guy was oblivious to it. He even had some headphones. He was oblivious to what was happening. That he was even smiling, was like, oh no, no, what what are you talking about? What what are you doing? And everybody was just watching. Nobody said a thing. I think that fool was out of off his rails or something. He was out of his freaking mind. All I just said was, Hey man, come on, man. Leave, no, leave the guy alone. He ain't doing nothing to you, man. Leave the fool alone. What's the matter with you? Oh, you another Mexican? Now I got two against me? Two Mexicans against me? And say, hey, yeah, I got something for you. That fool went inside his freaking backpack. He started digging inside his backpack and started going like this. I said, oh, yeah, now you're going to shoot me? Everybody in the freaking metro started running for cover, going under the freaking seats and everything. My my two boys right behind me, petrified, you know, watching what's happening while he was hollering and raving. I said, oh, yeah, now you're going to shoot me? They got a bunch of cameras around here, fool. You know, they got a lot of witnesses right here. You're going to shoot me now in front of my kids, too? You're nothing but a, you know, you're nothing but a bitch, fool. You're nothing but a punk. You know, they say, oh, you call me a bitch? And that fool comes up, and after that, you know, I just walked away. I just went like this to the guy, like, not like, oh, excuse me. Oh, excuse me. Um, you're nothing but a punk, man, you know, nothing but a, nothing, no, nothing but a punk, nothing but a bitch, stuff like that. I told him, but stuff like that. So I walked away from the guy, and I turned my back, and that fool started coming next to me. And I told him keep his, you know, he got almost close to me like this, and I was like, yeah, fool, what's up? What you wanna do, man? You know, swing. Come on. So I thought so, man. Ain't nothing but a bitch. I was trying to. I guess I was trying to provoke him. I got I got a little hot too, man. And, and I wasn't thinking straight. And I was like, yeah, punk. That's what I thought. You know, but pussy. You know, he said, yeah, I am a pussy. I said, yeah, because you smell like one too, punk. And so everybody started laughing in the freaking metro. In the train, no? We were inside, no, inside the metro, the, the train. And so I decided to get off on that, you know, to try to avoid this guy. This was started to follow us. We got off on that next station. Started to follow us, man. And somebody else got off with us. Next thing you know, some other person started, the cops were, happened to be over there. Outside. Because it was like uh, right there uh, close to the, the L.A. Tretech College. We got off right there. And the police happened to be over there, across the street. Somebody started hollering to them, Hey, that guy got a gun over there. He got a gun. And um, I started walking over there towards the cop, because that fool was following me. And I had my two boys like, Fool, you better stay away, man. You better keep your distance from me, man. You better stay away. I was ready to just, like, I was going to just swing at that fool. I was going to knock him clean out. And, um... And then the cops got wind of him, and they started going towards him, and it's like, oh, yeah. And so that fool voluntarily went over there towards him, saying that I was doing something to him. So I don't know what happened afterwards, man, but I just took off. And the guy that was behind me was like, hey, well, you did the right thing, man. You got your kids with you. You know, because me, said, I I'm a boxer, the guy was telling me. Shout out to the guy. He's telling me he's from Costa Rica, from... Nicaragua or something like that. He said he was ready to knock him clean out, spark out. He was going to spark, you know, knock him spark out. Because he was right, you know, behind him. He got in position and everything. He said, I got, got in position, man. I was going to knock him clean out. But um, I had to let my, I had to calm down too, you know. And so we were walking together and um, even my son hugged him, you know. For what he was saying, you know, and. And we appreciate him. No, I appreciate the guy. And so, um, yeah, I had another is incident like that. That was a, uh, that was like a, like a couple, like a couple, like some weeks ago. And so, yeah, I've been a lot of stuff like that happening, man. Some other fools too trying to fight me, and 
there's nothing nothing good man nothing on you know everything on call for you know that one well you know i stuck my you know well, i wasn't gonna let nobody touch another man you know especially you know hispanic guy that he didn't even know what the heck he was talking about he didn't even speak the same language so i wasn't gonna allow that you know and all i just said was you no know, leave the guy alone man you know I'm like, come on, man, just leave the guy alone, man. But then he started going off on me, so. You know, so, yeah. And then my son started telling me, yeah, that how brave I am and stuff like that. I'm like, no, man, you got to use your freaking brain. That's what you got to do. You can't just, I would have been somebody else. I would have sparked him right out, right then and there. I would have sparked him. You know, you got to know how to use your brain and how to, how to talk to people. That's what the name of the game really is. But even though with some people it's not, you got to be the, the exception, you know? So, yeah. We're going to start posting some more, man. Anybody wants to come over, go ahead and comment. You know, comment to us, man. Thank you for, you know, for following us and stuff like that. I appreciate it. Um, thank you for following us, man. God bless you guys. God bless everybody that has come through, that has commented. Um, anybody wants to talk to us, you guys want to tell us our story, man, my podcast went, you know, didn't get any wings, you know. I don't know what happened to uh, uh, Johnny Hash Brown because I was supposed to do it with him. Shout out to him. If you're out there, brother, man, go ahead and get in contact with me, dude. Um, I try to contact you in my email. I send you an email. GomezSteve1981 at gmail.com. Anybody can contact me right there. Again, GomezSteve1981 at gmail.com. And, um, or, send, you know, put a, you know, put a comment right here in my post. On my channel. Either way, you know, we'll get back to you. Do you have a story? Do you guys, you know, want to tell us some of your story? What you guys got? I'm gonna try to. Finally, I'm gonna try to interview some of these guys and see if I can get them to do it. Um, thing is that most of them, most of them speak Spanish, so I'm gonna see if I can get somebody that speaks English. They can tell us their life story, you know, which was the intention of this this channel, you know. That's what I wanted to do to have people tell us a story. So we'll see. We'll see what happens. But either way, man, thank you guys, man. I love you guys. Shout out to everybody out there, man. Everybody that's followed us. All the friends that I have. All the homeboys. All those compas. You know, los paisas, you know. All the girls, too, that, you know, that chill out with us, too, man. Like Sugar and, and you know, all you, all you girls, too, man. All the baby girls. Shout out to you. To you girls, too. I appreciate it. Appreciate your support. And everything else. You know, even the girl that uh, my sons consider her um, a girlfriend. You know, her name is Araceli. So she's a young girl that works over there in Nine Nine Cent Store. Shout out to Araceli. You know, hola. <laughs> and so, yeah, guys. So we'll talk about that. You know, I'm gonna go ahead and start posting with my sons again. We're going to start doing some other videos. And I'm um, doing a lot of uh, short clips and stuff like that. And some other videos. You know, we're going to start getting uh, getting a active again. So we're going to see what happens. But for now, you know, it's goodbye, man. I'll see you guys later. So you guys take care. God bless you guys. Godspeed to anyone and everyone. God bless you guys. We'll talk to you guys on the next one. See you guys later. Puro Chicano U-Turn.